So build progress. This is for the version 4 tiles board. Um, so PCBWay have soldered this board already with most of the sockets. So if I zoom in a little bit as far as I can, so you can see, um, actually their soldering is really very, very, very neat. When I was first looking at this, I thought it's not quite soldered. And then I had to get out the magnifying glasses and actually check and, and yes, the soldering is incredibly neat. A much neater job than actually I've ever been able to do. Um, the eagle-eyed viewers might notice that some of these sockets aren't soldered. And that's because I was a little bit of an umpty. So when I was putting this board together, um, these memory ICs here and the sockets for these ICs. I was placing these manually because I wanted to have them in a set nice position in the board and, and this one is also I think manually set but these ones are definitely manually placed and when I was manually placing them I, I manually placed them in uh, metric mode with gr metric grid snaps but the rest of these components by default are aligned with an imperial grid in thousands and stuff like that right so um, these sockets here and if I this one here is also not soldered in I was trying to get this one to fit too uh, but basically these four sockets here there just isn't quite enough room so what I tried for one of them if I can focus this is that I tried uh, soldering off uh, the correct edge on uh, tried sanding off the edge rather not soldering so, sanding off the edge here uh, you can see here that the pin on the corner and, and this pin here has started to become um, exposed and that's because I, I trimmed off about a half a mil millimeter of um, plastic and it allows the socket to just about fit in one of the spaces here. If I push it down, it just about slots in, but these other ones here are a little bit problematic. They really do not fit at all. Um, so uh, what I've been experimenting with is creating a taller height decoupled socket. Uh, so what I did was uh, basically I just <coughs> over here I yanked out the pins from this socket here. Actually, I didn't yank them; I pulled them, uh, pushed them right there, pushed them back out because they just pressed in and fitted them onto the bottom here. So now we've got nice, a nice little double height socket, if you like. And this double height socket, if I go over here into this corner here and then try and seat it into the holes. Um, I was fiddling around with this, with this earlier on and it fits in quite snugly um, but there's just about enough space if I turn it around it may be a bit a little bit easier to see it just about fits in and the pins will go down into the holes in the board and then I can solder it onto the other side so these components here are going to be a little bit raised compared to the other ones but that's okay it's a it's a small price that i'm willing to pay uh, to basically not get the whole board uh, remade and re-socketed this was entirely my fault um, and on the next revision of the board i've already corrected this issue i could see it pretty clearly in the in the design tool the design rules checker didn't highlight this because basically the design rules checker was assuming that all of these uh, ICs are going to be soldered directly onto the board and of course with ICs being soldered directly onto the board it's just uh, the IC wires um, or the IC pins going straight into the holes there's there's more than enough space but when I add these um, obviously these socketed 
ICs here, then it's got all of the extra plastic here and it just doesn't quite fit. Annoying, but recoverable. So I'm just going to continue soldering up this. And of course the edge connectors, I'm going to have to solder up the edge connectors because I didn't want PCB way to solder up those and also the, the headers here. I'm just going to solder these in and then I will populate um, with ICs and then see how it goes. And I might do some connectivity tests um, by checking all of these as well uh, against the schematic. Um, everything looks like it's really well soldered. And to be honest, I don't do connectivity checks <laughs> um, when I do the soldering. So you know, why would I want to do it when it looks really quite neat and well done? But I might just do it anyway, just to be on the safe side. Because in the previous build, when I was doing the sprites board build, um, it did throw up some issues. Um, after population, when I was trying to debug the build, I did notice that a few of the, the sockets were badly soldered and I had to fix those up. But we'll see how that goes. So build progress update. You might be able to see just down here that I've attached the version 4 tiles board to the remaining pixel 3 and 4 inputs here and here on the version 3 video board. Connected it up to the Commodore 64 via the user port interface. So this is the power on state. I'm going to test it first of all with this little demo here, which was the uh, the sprite multiplexer demo, which just uses the character screen and, and the sprites. So hopefully when I run this, it should, in theory, just display something which looks a lot like that. Uh, the tiles board in this demo is disabled. Only the display is enabled now. So actually you'll notice, you might notice, um, that now because the tiles board has all of the logic for display, enable, um, border X and Y tweaking, uh, size tweaking, so shrinking the border X and Y width and height, uh, the tweaking, the, the logic for that is held all on the tiles board. So uh, I don't need any of the hacky wires which come from here and go into here and vice versa now. Uh, the tiles board is all driving that as well. So actually it's it's a good sign that the tiles board is relatively not uh, relatively okay, that it's got some display on the screen. So if I run this now, uh, we should see the same kind of thing. Fantastic. Um, it means that at least the character's functionality and the sprite functionality is not broken now, uh, which is a good sign. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the Commodore 64. Wink. Like that. Uh, and so because there's no interrupt running now, because there's no code running, of course there's no sprites being displayed because the multiplex sprites are being continuously updated as they go down the screen. So now I'm going to reset this. I'm going to run the other demo now. So this, this little demo here should exercise the character screen. So what this does is that it uses the character screen and the tile screen together. And I'll run it again, just so you can see. So the first part of the demo is, is that it uses a screen split. So the tile screen actually renders the Arkanoid logo at the top, which scrolls in, and then it renders this bouncing ship animation. The ship animation is actually a huge, great big virtual screen. So if I uh, try and find, it's, I think it's this one. Uh, yes, I want to load it. Yeah, so the tiles screen is, is used uh, to store all of the ship animations plus the logo here in this great big virtual tile screen. And what it does on the demo is that it scrolls to all of these different positions with a little bit of uh, Y bouncing, if you like. So this shows that the logo can be drawn up in the top half of the screen 
And, and this is actually the background color here, the blue background color. And then it, it's hidden here by some uh, opaque black characters, but somewhere around here, uh, the screen split occurs where the, the tile screen then scrolls to the different virtual tile screen position and it goes and it displays the, the spaceship animation frames plus also the bounce. So if I run that, we should see that here. So if I run the same same code, but it's assembled it with different stuff. Wow, fantastic. That worked really well. So I'm going to reset that again. And then I'll just run that again. And scrolling on, and then the ship animates and bounces up and down really quite nicely. Wow, fantastic. I'm really, really happy with that. That looks excellent. Lovely. Okay, so the third demo uh, that I want to try now, um, if I reset Commodore 64 again, the third demo I want to try is uh, this one is the original RPG demo, but what I've done is that I've disabled the mode seven screen. Um, I've disabled all of the music data because uh, the graphics data plus the music data doesn't fit inside the Commodore 64's memory, it's, it's too big. Um, so if I run this in the emulator first, you'll see what it should look like. It should look something like this. So uh, we've got the player character in the middle, I can run around, uh, the screen scrolls around. Um, the stacked sprites actually contain more than eight colors uh, because I'm stacking the sprites um, as and when necessary to get me more colors. Uh, there's a character layer for the score panel and the status panel, and then the tiles layer scroll, scrolls around behind. Uh, so we should see something like this on the Commodore 64. If I go over here, there we go. Wow, fantastic. So if I um, use my other hand and scroll around, we can see here that it uh, scrolls. Ooh, wow. Ah. That's interesting. I'm seeing every, is it every eight pixels, roughly? Let's see, let's try and find a common position. So I'm gonna li line one of those stones up underneath the A of the, the white A of the status panel and scroll it along. Yeah, it looks like every eight, every eight pixels looks like one of the values. Ooh. Yes, generates a wrong tile index. Okay, one moment please. I'm gonna debug this in the code and I'm gonna see what's happening. It's not in the Y position, not at all. The scroll, X and Y scroll registers are actually updated by one value each time, so one pixel, so. Hmm, okay, let's, let's, let's see. It gets those it from the X position when scrolling left or scrolling right, so it's definitely one of the pixel scroll positions is causing this. Okay, one moment, I'm going to try and debug this in the code. So I, I found the problem. Um, if I go back to the code and I'll show you what the solution is. The temporary solution is a software workaround. So uh, what we have here is that um, if the tile X position, when moving left or right, um, anded with seven and then compared with seven is, is equal to seven, um, then it does one extra scroll, either in the, when going right or going uh, left up here. Um, what this does is that it avoids tile X position, X scroll position, and it with seven, when equals to seven, it avoids that. And that seems to fix the issue. It does mean, unfortunately, that um, one out of every eight pixel scroll position positions, it does, it skips ahead one um, and it scrolls twice as fast. Um, or I could delay it by a frame and then scroll in two pixel jumps. Um, so this is a slight hardware issue um, that's solvable in software. Um, however, I'm gonna have to debug this properly to see where the problem is. It's probably where I'm not 
adding values or what it, what it might be is that uh, what it might be is, is that in the hardware I'm actually adding um, the X position um, using an adder and the adder might be rippling um, the counter may have been rippling as well but the, 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 count, the counters ripple might have been uh, very small and imperceptible whereas with an add coming into the equation there might have been a ripple or a double ripple effect um, which would have been causing one of the other signals to get confused and fetching the tile index early um, or maybe clashing with the color. I'm going to have to uh, debug this in the simulator see if I can reproduce it um, and then maybe that's a, an option for uh, improved hardware for the next version for the tiles but I've noted it anyway in my change log but anyway I'm quite happy that first version of the scrolling tile screen actually you know pretty much works with a little software workaround uh, so that's pretty cool um, this is certainly uh, usable uh, for a first stage of, of hardware fantastic really is great Wow. Okay, so um, things to note was, was that little um, X position uh, scrolling bug. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about these vertical strips of color. Um, I might be getting some interference. It could be all sorts of things. Um, I might have to try the changing the video box, video conversion box. Um, it might even be the TV. Um, I somehow doubt it's a TV. It's probably uh, probably some interference with the video here. It's it's very noticeable on areas of of the screen which have got you know all green colour. But generally speaking, yeah, pretty good. Wow, especially considering I that this is the first time I've actually tried this hardware. Um, I'm amazed that it it worked first time. Um, actually, you know, so with this version of the video board. Um, I asked PCBWay to basically solder up all of the um, IC sockets for me, so it was a lot less soldering. Um, I'm very happy with that because it just meant, meant just meant that I could populate with ICs, so it was a lot quicker and easier, and I didn't burn my fingers or, or hurt my fingers or anything. It was fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm, wow, look at this. Wow, I'm really happy with this. I'm absolutely over the moon that it's just working. That is fantastic. Okay, I'm going to play around with it now and, and see if I can do some um, better demos.